Hello and welcome to the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along Echoes and Curves. I'm Angela Walters and in this video we're going to be playing around with echoing to highlight different parts of our quilt. I'm going to give you tips on how to keep your echo lines consistent. I'll show you different ways to highlight blocks using echoing and we'll really get busy quilting our panel. I'm going to show you how to quilt it on a sewing machine and a long arm, so let's get to it. Last week we talked about using echoing to make spaces more manageable, to make them smaller and change their shape, but this week we're going to use echoing to highlight our favorite portions of the quilt. The most important thing to remember is that what you echo is what you'll highlight, so your echoing might be different depending on the effect that you want to create. If you want to group blocks together or create a cohesive unit, echoing just one side of all the blocks will help do that. So throughout the video series, I'm quilting on this custom challenge panel. The blue makes a beautiful secondary design. To really help emphasize that shape and highlight that portion of the quilt, I'm going to use echoing of those blocks. But instead of echoing all three sides, I'm going to echo just one side that they have in common, that top block. And by keeping it consistent in all those blocks, it's going to really help bring that together. Now in this particular example, I'm going to echo just one side of the blue triangles because I love the secondary design it's gonna make. I'm gonna start by stitching along the seam. You definitely don't have to do this, you could leave it out. But since I'm here and since I like stitching in the ditch, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna echo this side of the line by traveling along the seam. If I want a quarter inch spacing, I'm just gonna travel along that seam about a quarter of an inch or until the edge of my foot touches that seam. If maybe I don't want it to be so dense, I can travel about a half of an inch. Then I'm going to position my ruler and echo that line I've just quilted. Now when it comes to using rulers, I want to make sure that the needle is in between my fingertips. So once I get past my fingertips, I need to pause and either reposition the ruler or reposition my hand. Now that I've hit the other seam, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to travel along the seam until I hit my desired spacing and then echo my way back. Okay, so I'm using a ruler to create those echo lines. Of course, you absolutely don't have to. I could do this without the ruler. But the thing to remember is that when using a ruler, we're not using it to make perfectly straight lines. We're using it as a guideline so that we have lines that are straight-ish. If you're using a ruler, using the reference lines will really help you out. I'm using these reference lines as I travel along the seam to help space out my echo lines. That's just gonna keep me from having to take time to measure with my ruler and figure it out. And I'm going to keep quilting those echo lines, traveling along the edge and echoing the one I've just quilted until I fill up the whole area. And that means as the space gets smaller and smaller, my lines are going to get shorter and shorter, which is definitely a good thing. Once the area is filled in, if you'd like, you can travel along the edge of the seam to get to your next block. While the echo lines might look pretty simplistic and basic, it's that secondary effect that we're really going to love when we're done quilting it. Now I'm going to quilt another block the same way and I'll give you just a few more tips that will help make echo quilting a little bit easier. Tip number one, when I'm echoing an area, I usually like to start with the longest edge first. The longest edge is usually the most important edge, that's usually the one that I'm echoing. It's really going to help establish the echo lines I'm going to quilt here on after. It doesn't always work out that way, but if it does, I definitely take advantage of that. Tip number two, check periodically that your lines are still echoing the edge of the quilt block. What can tend to happen is as we're echoing lines we've already quilted, if one line is off just a little bit, they're going to continue being off. So every once in a while, I'll stop and make sure that my ruler or my line is still echoing that main side. If I've gotten off track a little bit, I'll try to compensate or try to smooth it out. I won't be too worried about it, but it definitely helps keep those echo lines on track. So I might pause here for a second, make sure that those lines are still echoing the way they should be, pretty much staying even with the edge of that block. And tip number three would be to make sure that you use the reference lines on your ruler to help keep that spacing consistent. Now I know this might seem obvious, but I want to point out one thing. In this particular example, I'm quilting from the right towards the left point, but I prefer quilting with my ruler on the left side. What that means is I'm not able to use my previously quilted lines as guides. For example, if I didn't mind working from this side of the ruler, I could use these reference lines to put with my previously quilted lines. So every once in a while I'm going to check and make sure that spacing is correct and then still come to this side and continue on. Now what I love about Sid is Sid has these extensions that will give me reference lines on the other side of the ruler. So even though I prefer to work from the left side, I can align that extension up with that previously quilted line and it's going to help give me guidelines on both sides of the foot, which is really nice. Now, I like stitching in the ditch because it helps me move around an area and it helps me establish the boundary that I'm filling in. 
And what's nice about having these extensions on either side of the ruler, this first reference line right outside the edge will show me where my stitching line will end up. So if I line that first reference line on my seam, that's gonna kind of help ensure that my ruler is straight to the seam I'm working on. Now let's talk about echoing two sides of a block. Sometimes I'll have an area and I'll decide I wanna echo two of the sides because I like the way it frames a particular element, or maybe I wanna highlight the position that it has in the quilt. And this particular block, I just kind of like how echoing these two sides is gonna help kind of frame a little bit more of the main element of the quilt. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm still gonna echo. I'm just gonna pivot when I get to that corner. And again, the reference lines on the ruler are helping me keep my line straight to the seam, and it's helping me kind of project where I'm gonna end up. And I'm gonna keep going until I run into the seam. What's also nice about echoing two sides of the block is that I can always easily get out of this block when I'm finished. Since the lines are running into the edge, I can travel along and move on to the next design. But if I want a curvier look or I don't want to quilt so many echo lines, I can just add a few and then fill it in with my other quilting design. What I love about echoing is it really looks nice next to other designs. So I'm going to do serpentine lines because that's what we're learning, although I could put any other kind of design in this area. And even though I have an irregularly shaped area, I'm still going to quilt my serpentine lines the same way that we always have. Quilting that line that curves out from the edge, switches direction, and then curves into the other side. And this is the reason I always leave my ruler foot on. I love to be able to switch between ruler quilting and regular free motion quilting without taking the time to switch out my feet. Now the higher profile of the foot does make it a little harder to see at the needle, but I'm usually looking ahead of the needle in the direction I'm going. Now let me show you another way to quilt straight lines that are gonna really draw attention to a point. So if you have a point that's perfect that you wanna show off, or this happens to be your favorite fabric, quilting straight lines that all go to that point will definitely help draw attention and show it off. I'm gonna use straight lines to draw attention to one particular point of the block as opposed to one particular side. So I'm gonna travel along the seam, but when I get to this point, instead of traveling and echoing that line I just quilted, I'm gonna pivot the ruler and quilt a line that radiates out from that point until I run into the opposite edge of the block. The spacing between the lines is up to you. It really depends on how big your block is and how dense you want the quilting to be. And once I get to that outer seam, I'm gonna travel the same distance and then return back to the point. Add another one just because. So all these lines are gonna to return to the same point and I'm gonna use traveling on the opposite side of the block to get to the next one. And from that point, I could easily travel to my next block and continue stitching in the seam. The thing to remember is that where we place echoing or where all the lines come together, those are gonna be areas that we're gonna draw attention to. So make sure that these are areas that you really love. Okay, now that we've seen this on a sewing machine, let me show you what echoing looks like on a long arm. Everything is still the same. I'm still using the reference lines as my guide, and I'm still trying to keep it as consistent as possible. The main difference is I can't quilt diagonal lines on a long arm without a ruler, so I'm definitely using a ruler. The most important thing to remember is that you only have control within your fingertips, so make sure that you're only quilting where your fingers are. Sometimes when the travel lines are short, I might use a ruler to nudge the machine along ever so slightly. I'm using this contrasting thread so that you can really see where I'm quilting. However, if you're quilting along with me on the challenge panel, use the thread colors that match the area that you're quilting. The result will be a beautiful texture that looks amazing. If the ruler that I have isn't quite long enough for the area that I want to quilt, I'll use those reference lines to kind of project where it's going to end up. I'll quilt along the ruler part of the ways, then reposition it, then continue on to my end point. Okay, now it's your turn. If you're quilting along with me on the custom panel I designed for the challenge, go ahead and fill in all the areas highlighted in red. Now this is definitely a little bit more than we've done the last few weeks, but just take your time and have fun. Use echo lines, use serpentine lines, try some different variations, just have a good time with it. Don't forget, I have the downloadable tip sheet with quilting diagrams so that you can be successful with your echo quilting. Plus, I've also included a lot of up-close pictures of my quilting on the panel to give you suggestions on what to place where. All right, well, you've got a lot of quilting to do, so get to it. I'll be back next week because we're gonna talk about using serpentine lines as a background filler. So have fun, happy quilting, and I'll see you soon.